Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Now, I get a lot of Winchester set trigger work coming through the shop. And I think that's because there just aren't a lot of people out there that understand how they function and even fewer that can repair them and get them functioning correctly if, if they're not working right. Now, one of the big challenges I always face with set triggers is finding parts. If the, if the assembly's missing some parts or has some badly broken parts, a, a lot of times if you can find the parts, they're very, very expensive. In fact, not very long ago, I saw a, a complete 73 set trigger assembly, lower tang assembly, go through eBay and sell for $1,000. Ironically, that particular assembly ended up going through this shop and, and was able to use it to get a, a nice 1873 set trigger gun functioning properly again. Now, there aren't any options for, for reproduction parts either that I know of. Now, for years, a gentleman by the name of Jim Gruder and all places Winchester, Wyoming, um, made reproduction set trigger parts for Winchesters and would even work on set trigger assemblies uh, if you sent them to him. But Jim's retired now and, and so that source has dried up. So I'm always on the lookout for set trigger parts for Winchesters. And recently I was at a show and, and uh, things got a little slow so I was out cruising the tables and I happened to walk by this table and there were some really badly rusted 1873 parts on the table. And after I had walked by, I thought, well, you better go back and check and see if there's any uh, set trigger parts in that bunch. And lo and behold, I went back and I found that the, this lower assembly was a, a set trigger assembly. It had quite a few of the parts in it. I could see the top couple of springs were broken, but um, you know maybe it was worth taking a chance on. So we negotiated a price of $50 for, for a, a lower a tang assembly, a rusty side plate and a rusty finger lever in hopes that I could recover something out of it. If I could get even one decent usable set trigger part out of this, it was worth the $50 that I spent on it. But the big question was whether I could get even one part out of it. And this thing is in rough, rough condition. Now I didn't intend to make a video out of this so I, I didn't get a, a before picture but I've been for a month now, every time I walk by I, dab a little croil on it and let it soak and I've been digging out some of the rust and, and crap and corrosion that was in there and it's it's starting to look a little bit better and I'm starting to get a little more positive about being able to, to get it apart and maybe salvage some parts and we even got a little bit of movement in the hammer now so I thought I'd invite you folks along we'll see if we can't bust this thing apart see if we can't uh, salvage anything and if we can see if we can uh, clean it up to where it might be useful for a future project. Now let's take a look at what I got for my hard-earned 50 bucks. <laughs> we got a badly bent and broken finger lever, but it does have a decent looking cam on it. And theoretically anyway, those cams are removable. Um, maybe the ship sailed on that one, but we're going to give it a try and see if we can't salvage that cam off of there. We got a side plate here. Now the inside of this side plate is cratered worse than the surface of the moon. But the outside's really not that bad. There's a deep crater pit here, one right here where the side plate screw goes through, here and here. So we'll set that one aside and maybe someday we'll go back and, and TIG those up and spend way too much time trying to salvage that side plate. But here's why we, we bought this group of parts. Now, any sane person probably would have been went running the other direction as soon as they saw it. You can see that the rust here is just kind of eaten away most of this side of this lower tang um, and and this thing, this was all just kind of covered up in gunk and, and old rust but we can see that the the top two springs here are, are broken so they're not salvageable but the hammer itself surprisingly looks pretty decent uh, obviously we wouldn't put that on a high condition gun but I, I think we can clean it up if everything's still okay on it and we can get it out now the, the, the half cock notch is still in good shape, the sear still looks pretty good. Um, we can even see that the, the sear override or the fly there is, is still in there. Don't know whether we can get it. There's a piece of one of the uh, springs right there. That's the end of the knockoff spring. Okay, and, and looks like the, the knockoff itself and the catch hook here may be salvageable if we can get those out of there. So without further ado, let's see if we can just salvage anything at all out of this old girl. 
Okay, now that we've got a little bit of movement in this hammer, I'm feeling pretty confident that we can get this hammer out of here. Now we've got a lot of crap and corrosion on this side of the pin and this side not so much. So we're going to try to drive away from that, the worst looking side there rather than try to drive through it. Let's see if we can get it to go. Oh, it's going right out of there. Fantastic. Well, it started pretty easily, but now it's hanging up some. There we go. Awesome. That's fantastic. All right, and really, I think we can clean this thing up. Our stirrup's bent. We maybe can bend that back. If it breaks, we can get another stirrup. And that that fly or or uh, sear override is in there. It's it's stuck. We've got a lot of coil that's, that's sitting on top both sides of the pin, and maybe we can get that out of there eventually. We'll set that aside for now. Okay, next thing, we'll see if we can't get this screw out that's holding the springs in. I don't think there's much hope for those springs. Like I say, the top two I can see up for sure are broken. The coil hopefully worked its magic. We put a little vibration by tapping. Oh man, look at that. That's fantastic. It, it broke right loose. Now, I, of course, I use coil. You may have something else that, that you like, but you know, I've just had fantastic luck with, with coil for this kind of situation. Okay, let's see. Of course, this one is, is broke off about halfway up that, yeah, that arm on that uh, kickoff or kickoff catch spring ought to be about twice as long. We know the end of this one broke off because it fell out when I was showing it to you earlier. And we may have to take that next pin out. Oh, there, there it goes. So this, this is the, uh, the knockoff spring. That's the big thick one in the middle. And of course the end of it's missing now. And then the bottom spring is our, our sear spring. And it's hanging in there a little bit tighter. It does seem to be com complete. So we'll see if we can get it out of there without breaking it. Of course, it's pretty pitted and it's a thin spring to start with, so it's, it'll be kind of a miracle if we can save it. Because of the roughness there, it really doesn't want to give up and come out of there. Oh, there we go. It is complete, um, but it is pretty thin from rust. I doubt that, that we could flex that very much without it breaking. So that's probably not salvageable. So so far what we've got is that, that screw I think is salvageable. This hammer we'll have some high hopes for. Now let's see about getting the sear knockoff and I guess part of the, the uh, trigger is actually in there. Oh well we've got a pin here that we've salvaged, the hammer pin. Okay so this one Looks like we want to drive from this side. There's a lot more crap and corrosion on this side. So rather than drive through it, we'll drive away from the worst side here. Oh, this one's, oh, it broke loose. It, heck, Coral did a wonderful job here. I was thinking I might have to heat on it to beat on it. And that, that pin's actually in pretty darn good shape too. So. I think we've, we've salvaged a pin. That one, that pin is, is really uh, nothing special. We've got a couple of pins to go here, if we can get out, that are, are very special. One has a shoulder and, and one has a flat spot on it that has to go a, a particular way. So here we go. Here's, here's what's left of our, the top part of our trigger. And uh, obviously it's toast. The bottom half of it's gone. That sear really looks pretty darn good. Hopefully that will clean up. We can we can clean up that that uh, knife edge on that sear and reuse it again. And our knockoff. Actually, it's got a lot of pitting. We'll just have to see how it cleans up when we get all that rust off of it. 
Okay, so next is we want to try to get this catch hook out of here. And this is a this is a hard one to find, these catch hooks. A lot of them are broken. This one is is solid. Um, it looks like it might actually clean up. Now this one we have to drive the pin out from this side away from the catch hook because it's got a shoulder in it that holds that catch hook over to, to that side and so it only goes out in one direction. And we're going to need a little smaller punch, even smaller than that one. So we'll use a starter punch. It always when we go to a sixteenth they use a starter punch because we just we go through a lot of sixteenth inch punches. They've been so easy. Well and we got it started. Man these pins are coming out far easier than I was expecting. I really thought we were gonna have to beat on them and heat them and and uh, and even then they might not come out but this is this is fantastic okay so you can see how that pushed that catch hook over to that side took it with it and there's that pin if you can, I don't know if you can see that very well but there's a shoulder on it right right there that holds that catch hook over to the right side of the uh, lower tang and that catch hook really looks pretty good of course it's going to be going to have some pitting on it but I think that's certainly salvageable, and those are, like I say, are very, very hard to find. Now, our last pin here is what goes over this, well, it's broken now, but this knockoff spring, and it's got a flat spot on the bottom that has, has to be oriented towards the bottom. Um, not that that's important when we drive it out, but when we put it back in, that becomes very, very important. And it's something that a lot of people get wrong or they replace that pin with one that doesn't have a flat spot and then they have a heck of a time figuring out why their set trigger won't work. Now that one almost came out and now it's going to get tough. It probably has a, it's probably been flared over, there it goes. A lot of, a lot of these pins have been beat on the ends and so when you get to the end of it they, they don't want to come out. That one doesn't have the flat spot, so I, I kind of suspect that that one wasn't, that set trigger probably wasn't working, um, and it's so rusty, it's not really salvageable. Okay, so what else do we got left here? Oh, well, we've got the uh, tension screw for the mainspring. Let's see if we can get that out and, and save it. That's kind of a minor part, but there's no reason to toss it with this lower tang. I'm not sure what we'll do with this lower tang. It is so bad off, but I can see the uh, serial number on it. So it'll be kind of interesting to to uh, check with Jesse over at the Cody Firearms Museum and, and just see what this gun was originally. If it's a uh, like a 36 inch octagon barrel gun or something, <laughs> maybe, maybe we need to save this lower tang. Okay, all that's left now is um, the lever latch and sometimes those will come right out and sometimes they're a booger. This one doesn't look too bad so we'll just, we've got a, a, a very small pin here with kind of a pointed end to help it get started and we'll drive it away from that end. It's been driven out and kind of mushroomed in the past and that one come right out. Now we've got to get a, a real small there we go so we'll take this spring off and this is salvageable for a, a lower condition rifle of course it's it's pitted but not not heavily I think that'll that'll clean up pretty well so let's take a little closer look at these parts and then we'll we'll see if we can't get the rust off of them and look and see what they look like so this is what we've ended up with. Of course this lower tang is in pretty rough shape and you can see the the crap and corrosion that was in underneath those parts after I pulled them out. Now that whole lower tang was just packed with that kind of stuff when we started out. Now this this tang actually isn't as bad on the bottom side um, so you know it, it may have a use at some point on a real low condition gun but probably not. Now. Up here we can see that obviously the trigger assembly, there's only a small portion of it left and nothing salvageable about that. This is what the, 
the uh, knockoff spring should look like if it were still in one piece. And then the catch hook spring would look like this if it weren't broken. The sear spring, of course, as we mentioned, is just paper thin. I'm sure if we put that in the gun and, and pulled the trigger the first time, we'd just snap the end of that off. But everything below here, we still have hope for. So what we need to do now is, is clean it all up and get this rust off of it and see what's underneath all that, that surface rust and then uh, see if we can't get this, this fly sear override out of here. But we're gonna get the rust off of it first. And to do that, we're gonna take it over and soak it in some evapo rust for a while and just see how that turns out. So before we drop our parts in this little jar of evapo rust, we got them soaking in some simple green for a little while and then we're just going to scrub them off with a nylon brush. What we're trying to do is just get rid of the, the uh, loose rust that's on the outside and you can probably see here that just sitting in this simple green for a while took a lot of the rust off and now some of the parts that we've already done here are actually pretty clean and probably don't even need to go into the evapo rust but we're going to put them in just to get them completely cleaned up anyway. Now one of the things to be careful of when you're using evapo rust works excellent on parts like this, but if you've got a blued part that has a little surface rust on it, evapo rust isn't the stuff for you. Remember, uh, bluing is actually a type of stabilized rust, so it's going to take the bluing right off with the, whatever rust is on it. So we'll go ahead here and, and clean up the rest of these parts real quick like, and uh, get them in the evapo rust. We don't have to do a, a super thorough job here. We're just, like I say, we're just getting the, the loose rust off of this stuff before it goes in the evapo rust. And that'll give the evapo rust a little better chance of getting in some of that deeper stuff if it's not so thick on the surface. Simple Green is, is really an excellent uh, parts cleaner. The legendary gunsmith Bob Dunlap, who ran the Lassen College gunsmithing program for 30 years, just swore by the stuff. Okay, we're just about done here. I'm really anxious to see how this hammer turns out because a uh, set trigger hammer is a kind of a, a tough one to find, one that's in good shape. Of course, this one doesn't have a good, any good finish on it, but it, the hammer notches are good and it's gonna be really interesting to see if we can get that, that fly out of there and save it. All right, so we're done with that. We'll block this stuff dry and just start dumping it in our evapo rust. I know it looks like a urine sample, but I promise it isn't. Okay, so here we go. We're going to just, these small parts we'll just dump in here. I like to use a see-through container because we really don't know how long it's going to take in this evapo rust to take the rust off. The instructions are quite specific in that it will take between 1 and 12 hours. <laughs> so if you can't see it, it's just a guessing game. Now these smaller parts usually don't take anywhere near 12 hours. And in fact, my experience when I've been using it on on parts that I, I'm going to uh, refinish or whatnot is I don't want to leave it in too long because it can, if you've le left it in like overnight, kind of etch the, the surface. Now on, on these pitted parts, that's not going to show up. But. Okay, so we're going to hang that, that uh, hammer in there. The rest of them are on the bottom and occasionally we'll come by and, and stir it around a little bit and, and uh, See if we can't break some of that remaining rust loose. So we'll come back in an hour or so and check it out and see how it looks. Now while those other parts are soaking in the evapo rust, let's see if we can't get this cam out of this lever. Now if you've handled many 73s, you've probably seen 73s with the lever kind of drooping. And it's this cam that keeps that, that lever from drooping like that. And, and this spring, this is our, our lever spring, and, and the spring, this little part right here, um, rides over that cam and that's what keeps that lever from from drooping so if we have one that, that's not staying up against the lower receiver we've either got a wore out lever cam or we've got a wore out or broken lever spring 
So here's what we're going to do to try to fix this. We're going to come come back here. We'll get this this uh, lever on the on our steel table here, clamped down real tight, and then we'll we've had this thing soaking again in coil for several days. And we're going to tap on it and see. Now this is this I'm sure is going to be a lot more difficult to get out than some of those pins on the uh, on some of those set trigger parts but we're going to give it a try and if we can't get it we may have to, to heat this thing some yeah it's not acting like it really wants to give it up and unfortunately we we have to use a, a pretty small punch and it's pretty easy to bend these small ones so we can't beat on it too hard we maybe made a little bit of an advance there uh, no. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I'll show you here. We just kind of got lucky there. Now, hopefully, you can you can see this. We can get it focused in. But see how that that cam there is now sticking out just a little bit. Try to get the light on it where you can see it. So right in there now we've got room in the back so that's these darn autofocus make it really tough to show you up close shots but hopefully you can see that now that's pushed out that way so we'll go ahead and just punch it the rest of the way out and save that cam there it goes now if we haven't lost it on the floor and of course we haven't so here's what our little lever cam looks like so we've got the the cam here and then the little pin on the back that, that drives through the the actual lever itself okay so we've let these parts sit in the evapo rust for about four hours now I think it's time to get them out and see how it's done now you can see one thing right off the bat, this evapo rust has gotten much, much darker. So we know that there's a, a lot of rust that's now in, in solution or suspension in there. We'll pull this hammer out first. And it's got kind of a, a light, oh, almost like a, a rusty scum on it. So we'll, we'll rinse it off here and scrub it a little bit. And I can see right up on the on the spur there was some heavier rust and we may have to actually go after it with a little steel wool or something. But overall it, it's come out pretty darn good. And our fly still is is not moving in there so we're gonna have to check it out if we're gonna save this hammer we have to get that fly to where it can move okay these other parts since usually you can get multiple uses out of this evapo rust but obviously I think we've we've used this up so we're just gonna go ahead and and dump it out Then we'll clean the rest of these parts up and uh, just see how they turned out. Okay, now that we've got these parts cleaned up and, and rinsed off, um, we've kind of got mixed results, but mostly very positive. Now these, these three pins, while they're, they're discolored and a little rough, um, I'm sure they're going to polish right up and, and be reusable. These, these two screws that we took out are in excellent shape, really kind of surprising to me, uh, both the, the heads, the slots, and the, the threads on them are in excellent condition and certainly usable. This sear, while it's, it's a little uh, rough looking, I'm sure it'll polish right up. We'll, we'll put a stone on this, this knife edge of the, of the sear here where it engages the hammer notches and, and I'm sure this is gonna be a good usable sear in the future. 
Um, really importantly for me, this catch hook is in wonderful shape. Just needs a little polishing. And while we were working on this project, a, a 73 came in with a set trigger that wasn't working. And when I took it apart yesterday, I found that, that it was missing a catch hook and I didn't have one. So if for no other reason, it was worth the $50 to get this catch hook if it's gonna get a, a 73 uh, set trigger assembly working for us in one of our rifles. Now, I am a little disappointed this this knockoff here uh, it, it for some reason rusted a lot more than the other parts it's still really rough it's lost quite a little bit of weight and it's just knockoff that the inertia of it when it's released from this catch hook is what knocks that that sear out of the hammer notch and allows the the hammer to fall when it's in set trigger mode so this is it's really important and if it's if it's lightened up much it may not have enough energy to do that and i'm not going to go into to uh, the mechanics of the set trigger a whole lot because i already did a video on that about a year ago i did a video called uh, set trigger diagnosis and repair so if you're interested in, in how set triggers work watch that episode now the, there's two parts that are seen from the outside of the the rifle and that's the the hammer here and, and this lever latch. Now this lever latch is in good enough shape. It could go on a shooter grade rifle right now. So we're just gonna leave that be. And then the hammer here, the hammer had a lot of pretty heavy rust on it. And you can see here that there are some, some places on this hammer where there's still a little bit of surface rust that it didn't get all the way through. And, and so we'll have to clean that up. Now the, the temptation always is let's get that, that part all restored and ready to go. So when a gun comes in that, that we can use it for, um, it's ready, but we don't know what the condition of that gun is going to be. So when it's an exterior part like this, I always leave the restoration part of it and, until we see what the condition of the, the rest of the gun looks like. Now, just for the fun of it, because we're going to take this catch hook over and put it right in a rifle, I'll show you real quickly how we go about just polishing it up. And probably most of you know how to polish up a part, but... We can either use a, a stone, and we'll try it on, on a stone first and see how it's going. And it looks like that's gonna work really good. Or in the case of something that's maybe a little rougher, we've got some sandpaper we can put with, with a backer here on, on, a, on a file. And if it's really rough, we could even just start off with, with the, the file underneath and, and, and file it. This is a smooth cut file. This one doesn't really need it, but of course we could, we could start that way. And we can see that one's cleaning up really good. It's gonna take a little while to get to the bottom of those pits, but um, it's not, not too bad. And we, and we can leave some of those deeper pits. It's really not gonna affect the function of it. We just don't want it so rough because it is gonna be sliding against another part as it works in here. And of course the edges that, that are gonna be up against other parts, we wanna get those pretty smooth. Okay, so we've got one last task. Let's see if we can't get this fly or sear override out of this hammer. Because if we can't get that freed up and, and working, the, this hammer is pretty much useless to us. It, it won't function as a set trigger hammer. So let's see if we can't get it out. Okay, so this little part right here is what we're going after. This is our fly or sear override. It's just a little piece of sheet metal and, and it rides in a little groove right here uh, in the hammer. Now the early ones had one that was machined in on the outside out here. They call that an outside fly and this one's an inside fly. And what it does is when the, when the sear is engaged here, when we're in set trigger mode, if, if we knock that, that sear out, it'll drop into the half cock notch and, and won't fire. So that little piece of sheet metal, it, the sear catches on the edge of it and then that overrides and lets the hammer drop. Okay, it's a tiny little pin and it is a bugger to get out, but we're gonna give it our best shot here. And it's, it's smaller than a 16th, so I've got a couple of little broken pieces of very, very small diameter punch that I'm gonna use to try to get it started. Hey, it's actually going. I love it. There's that pin coming out the back side. Hopefully you can see that all right. Okay, let's see if we can get it all the way out and then we'll see if that 
that fly will come out without it because it's pretty well rusted in there. And I better save that pin. They're hard to come by. Of course, we we could make one. They're, they're just a a pin. Okay, now the fun begins. We're gonna try to get that darn thing to come out of there. Maybe we can work it back and forth a little with a brass punch. It's moving. Sorry, I hear our autofocus working overtime there, so probably we're in and out of focus pretty badly. And I may have to soak this in some more croil to get it to, to come out. Okay, so it's taken a whole lot of back and forth, but we just about got it to come out of there now, and I think I can just push it out now with this punch. Yep, there it is. So it, it's actually, you know, it's a little pitted, but it's in, in very, very, very good shape. So I think that's going to be useful once we get it polished up. And then we're going to have to clean this this really narrow little groove out here so that, that it can move freely in here. But this hammer, while it's not a thing of beauty anymore, it could be restored and it's certainly going to be a workable set trigger hammer again in the future. Now before we go, remember I said I needed that catch hook for a project 1873 that I was working on? Well, I went ahead and, and put this thing together with this old catch hook. Remember we were polishing up on that and maybe you can see that. It's just sticking up just out of the assembly there. And one of the really nice things about these 73s is we can set or test the set triggers outside the rifle. So anyway, let's see if, if we can get this thing to work. So we'll cock the hammer. Set the trigger. Now I'm going to keep that trigger hammer from falling all the way. Yep, there it works. So that chance we took with 50 bucks at the at the gun show um, paid off at least for for this one. We've already got one set trigger assembly working, and we've got all these leftover parts for the next project. So always keep an eye out for those hidden treasures at the gun shows. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.